Welcome to Ballarat Grammar. Ours is a school that's founded in warm, supportive relationships that allow our students to flourish. They flourish academically, they flourish in their development of character through their involvement in our vast range of co-curricular activities, from sport, music, performing arts, to dance and drama. And they become incredibly community oriented through their involvement in a range of service activities. I hope that you enjoy this tour of our school and I look forward to meeting you in person. We've arrived at the Ballarat Grammar Junior School campus. I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Mark Warwick, who's the head of the Ballarat Grammar Junior School. G'day Bruce, how are you? Hello everybody. Um, Mark, you've been here at, as head of the Junior School for a number of years. How many years is that now? Uh, this is currently my fourth year and I'm very lucky to be the head of the Junior School. Having been here for 23 years, I see it as a fantastic way to give back to the community that's given me so much. So Bruce, we'll come, we'll come through into the Inquiry Centre first of all, but just on our way, we're going to head past the uh, the prep classrooms and, and the prep to two playground. In term one, this area is set aside for our preps so that they've got a safe place to play. And then as the term goes on, um, the students from prep to two come and utilise the play space, the, the sand pit and the beautiful river with the water pump up the end there. Mark, our approach to teaching and learning, or approach to curriculum, is uh, based upon Ballarat Grammar being an international baccalaureate primary years program school. Could you explain what that means to us? Yeah, so earlier we mentioned about being uh, involved in units of inquiry, and there's six main themes around those units of inquiry, who we are, where we are in place and time, sharing the planet, how the world works, how we express ourselves, um, and that leads to those big open-minded questions. So for example, um, some of them run right throughout the year, whereas the others might run for a shorter sort of six to eight week period. Um, the year sixes have a big one where they actually choose one of those and they turn it into their exhibition piece. And that's a massive research task. Um, and they involve lots of people from within our community, but also reach out to experts outside our community right. as well. Good evening and welcome to this very special report on topics that's captured the hearts and minds of the nation, or at least the Bart Grammar community. Teaching and learning in the junior school. This evening we delve into what the teaching and learning in the junior school looks like, how it works and the reasons why it is the way it is. But first, let's hear from Harriet Meekin and Spencer Bodie, who, who, filed this story, who filed this story earlier today. As the smiles and looks of focus on these faces show, the junior school at Bala Grammar is a happy place where learners work hard, try new things and always aim to be their best. At Grammar, all members of the school are seen very much as a community of learners. Mrs Carr, in a nutshell, what is it that you want teaching and learning in the junior school to be? Well ultimately Harriet, we want teaching and learning in the junior school to be engaging, significant, relevant and challenging. And if it's not these four things, then it's really not worth doing. And we in the junior school feel that by being an IB PYP school, we're able to achieve these aims. Well, let's put that to the test and ask the most important people in the school, the students. How would you describe learning in the junior school? Enjoyable and worthwhile? Oh, it's sometimes hard, it's sometimes easy. I would describe it as fun and is connected to the real world. Uh, challenging but interesting. Fun to do English and maths. I think it's good because you learn a lot of things here. Um, it's pretty fun because um, we can learn things that we don't know before when we're in um, the other grades. The junior school is now into its fourth year as an authorised IB world school and feels that as a community there is now a strong sense of key aspects of the PYP such as international mindedness, the attention to the whole child and the focus on globally significant knowledge and life skills, rigour and challenge, 
the commitment to develop strong pers personal values, all of which fit beautifully with the grammar philosophy and ethos. Miss Cornell Smith, you've been at the school for quite some time. What would you say is the aspect of PYP that has required the greatest, greatest unpacking since the school implemented this curriculum this model? Spencer, that's a really interesting question. Um, I think from my perspective, what some people have found most challenging is um, balancing an inquiry approach with explicit teaching. We all know that um, explicit teaching is really, really important to you know, moving children forward in their learning. Um, but what the PYP has given us now is a vehicle in which um, lets us use the best of both worlds. So it lets the children explore and engage on their own terms while teachers still get to use that explicit instruction. Of course, the best way to get a sense of just how extensive the learning is, is to take every chance to find out about the learning students are involved in. Seesaw is the online platform used for student portfolios in the junior school. Accessing this on a regular basis is the best way to get real-time feedback on learning and gain a window into what's happening in junior school classes. Visiting any junior school learning spaces gives great insight into the breadth and depth of learning on offer. And of course, the junior school teachers are always keen for a chin wag about their favourite topic, the learning going on with their classes. To get the balance right between an inquiry stance and explicit instructions, teachers need to work very closely together and that's why the junior school teachers take their planning very seriously. Collaboration is key to the learning experience for all in the junior school and just like teachers work together, students also collaborate regularly as well as work individually, in pairs or in larger groups, with and without the support of teachers and teachers' assistance. For those of us not fluent in teacher speak, it can sometimes be surprising to see just how sophisticated a unit of inquiry is. Links are made from right across the curriculum. Not only are subjects such as science, history, geography and health incorporated into units, but through the concepts being explored in the unit, learners can also explore fundamentals from English and maths, which M Mr Mike O'Neill explains for us. Through our units of inquiry, we try to make as many links as possible. Unit, during our unit of inquiry about ecosystems, we look at a lot of the ecosystems around Mount Rowan and Ballarat, and we try to make a lot of links. Like we look at the key concept of connection, and we look at the connection between fractions and decimals, as well as multiplication and division facts. You can see how the junior school teachers get a twinkle in their eye when they talk so passionately. Well there you have it, it seems pretty clear to us. The teaching and learning in the junior school is not just about going through the motions. The learners in the school really do love learning. Well, Harrod and Spencer, a very good comprehensive report there. Indeed. I was also interested to hear that assessment in the in the junior school is really important part of the teaching and learning with a focus on the students being really involved in the assessment process. That's right Addison, the assessment package in this junior school is deliberately made up of several layers reflecting the fact that learners will demonstrate growth and progress in a variety of ways. The junior school portfolios on Seesaw, favourite conferences and written reports are three arms of reporting on learning in the junior school. I'm here with our three wonderful prep teachers. We have Anna, Alex and Ava. Uh, we're in Ava's classroom at the moment, uh, which is Prep AK. What makes this space, the three classrooms and the space outside, such an important and exciting um, part of the school for our prep students? Um, well, I guess here in the prep um, area, we have a place and a space that includes creativity as well as learning. Um, and we understand that learning happens through play as well. So the students have opportunities for more traditional and explicit teaching, but they also have opportunities to inquire into different topics and use their creativity and learn while they play. Yeah, I think Alex, in building on that, the beautiful place about where we are physically situated in the school is something I love. We've the, the prep classrooms, where we are, it's in the heart of everything. 
right now in the junior school. We've got our art room over there, the playground, very important, like Bruce said. Um, but we also have just around the corner is our dance and drama studio. Music's across the road, life and faith is across the road. We're in the center of everything and being so close to each other as well, it means that we get to differentiate, which means we get to bring our cohort together and we get to really help each child where they are when they need to be by moving between our classrooms sometimes, which is really lovely. Yeah. I like to describe it as like being the heartbeat of the school, you know, with the preps. It's such a memorable year. Everyone remembers their first year of school and that is not lost on us. We try to make it as memorable as we can, um, providing lots of opportunities. Well, Bruce, we, as you said, we place a high importance on how our kindergarten students come into our classrooms and we are very conscious that that just doesn't happen cold. So we like to do a gradual process where the students, the kindergartners, are familiar with each of us on a personal level. We will do visits to kindergartens. Ava mentioned the SEED, the Centre for Early Education before. And we are fortunate enough to have that on our campus here in Ballarat, but we are aware that there are lots of wonderful children that come to us from other kinders all around Victoria, actually. Um, and we're really conscious to make it such a smooth and seamless transition. One that they can um, gradually build friendships and confidence. And we're aware that this is not just a big step for the children, it's also a big step for our families <laughs> too. Step. So we want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable, informed and content with their choice. Not just content, really happy with their choice to send their child here to Ballarat Grandma. Alex, what does a day, a typical day in the life of a prep student look like? Okay, so when they come into school, they'll come into their classroom, they'll pop their things away. Um, they've become really independent and in being able to take care of those belongings. Um, we start off with some quiet time in the morning, a bit of wellbeing check-in time where the students, um, we can find out if there's anything that they want to tell us and they can sort of touch base with their friends. We then launch into a two hour literacy block. So we're following the initial lit program, which is an a explicit literacy program which um, is teaching all of the skills that the preps need to know um, to be able to decode words. Um, after we do a session on the floor with explicit teaching they'll then have the opportunity to go back and do some independent work um, and there might also be some activities that they can then go on with and rotate around. Something that else that our program offers is our link to specialists and I think Ava's going to talk us a little bit more about that. So yeah, we have a really amazing specialist program at PrEP at Ballarat Grammar. So they get two hours of PE a week, which is fantastic, physical education in lots of different facilities that we have on offer. Sometimes it might be in our big gymnasium at the Rintel, sometimes it's out in the Oval. We've got a lot of different things on offer here. So two hours of PE, then they have an arts rotation every week, which is their dance, drama, art and music. So they get all of those experiences every week. We also have our wellbeing every week, our life and faith experiences. So they also have those as experiences. So the preps are very privileged in which they do get this wide, diverse range of different specialist subjects to really dip their toe in in their first mm. year. There are events that um, across the year that the preps would feature in also. What are they? They are, well, we are currently, it's very exciting, we're practicing for our school production. So um, That's an annual event? It is, yeah. it is. And the preps, obviously, they have the cute factor, but they're also very talented. They really surprise us in how well they, they do on stage, which is credit to the teachers as well. And, they're and such that's professional a clients. large event in the uh, Windery Centre for Performing Arts. So it's it something that all parents and grandparents and um, family can come along to. Yeah, we like to involve our community wherever possible. Wonderful. Yeah. They also take part in the junior school art show. Um, so students will work on an art piece or two over the course of a few months um, and then have their work hung in one of the art um, galleries here at school and they'll get the opportunity for them and their families to be able to walk through and have a look at their pieces of art that have been displayed. Alex, how will parents know about their child's learning? 
Um, so we do this in a number of ways. We have a digital learning platform, um, Seesaw. So work that students are completing here in the classroom, they will post photos or videos um, that will be in their own personal journal. Um, so parents can see sort of the day-to-day -day learning that is happening in the classroom. There's also the more formal reports um, that parents will be able to access through Nexus um, that gives more of the, um, I guess, the formal information that a parent might be looking for as well. Would you like to tell us about outdoor learning? I'd love to. So that's something that's beautiful as well. We have access to at Grammar our outdoor learning spaces and that includes the Centre for Early Childhood Education, the SEED. They allow us to use their bush kinder sites. So we're very privileged as a pro cohort. We get to go across, we aim for about every second week once we you know, have understood school, get the gist of school. Once we start going, we try to go every second week and that's where we bring this beautiful balance in prep in terms of really looking at our nature pedagogy, really embedding in the idea that we learn with and in nature, but also we bring in that explicit focus and those explicit teaching moments within those environments. So it's just this beautiful space where kids can really just come alive. They get to be outside in nature and they also get to bring in their learning experiences. And then we take those experiences and we bring them right back into the classroom. It's my favorite place. So something we prioritise at Ballarat Grammar are the lower class sizes, which frees us up to um, work one-on-one -on -one with students and naturally get to know them better, mm. where their point of need is, um, be able to work in small groups and move around. Um, in our spaces as well, we like to strike a fine balance between explicit teaching for more of your literacy and numeracy skills but also provide those opportunities for more of a play-based learning approach. So we've got feet in both camps mm. and we try to encompass everything to make the child receive a really well-rounded education. In closing, how would you sum up the prep experience here at Ballard Grammar? I think for me, prep is happiness. Prep is my happy place and I strive to make sure that it is a happy place for these beautiful kids to start their year in prep and to start their first school year. And I think prep is such an important year too because it's setting the foundation of everything that's going to happen for them in their school journey. So we really make the effort that they have a really happy time here at school, that they have the skills that they need and that they are happy to be here every day. Yeah, and I mentioned earlier how I was boasting that prep is like the heartbeat of the school and I really attest to that because the warmth that we create in these preps, as well as their parents as well, they've learned a lot from them too. Um, the values that we instill in them right from the beginning is really important. So yeah, it's a wonderful, warm place to be in prep. Wonderful. Thank you, Ava. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Anna. We've joined Clara Lyle, the Year 4 Coordinator at the Ballarat Grammar Mount Rowan Farm Campus. The farm campus is such an awesome learning space for students in the junior school. What is it about Year 4 and the program and the setting here at Mount Rowan that makes it such a terrific learning environment? Well, it's got to be the outdoors. The landscape, the animals, the baby piglets being born, there's just so many dimensions to it. Cooking your own food, uh, the play, imagination and play, building cubbies, riding the billy carts, very sought after. 
right. uh, a, f a fantastic um, place mm. to come. All the kids dream about it. I noticed, speaking of billy carts, you've got a little fleet of billy carts just here, um, parked uh, undercover. <laughs> um, how, I, I'm sure that's a popular element of the, um, the setting here at Mount Rowan. Well, huge. <laughs> They're undercover because um, the ch children want them to be looked after and don't want any damage or anyone to play with them that's not meant to be here. So they put them undercover and um, you can see each one has a different colour for each class. Now this space generally um, adjoins the classrooms. What happens here? Or what do you call this space? Oh, this is our river room. It's awesome. And it's the river room because at Mount Rowan we have a full water cycle and we've got this metaphorical river that flows through the building and joins up in the play space with a real river when it rains. Uh, we get about 15 mil of rain and it changes the whole landscape ah. outside. So the river rooms where we all come together as a community and share our um, news, celebrate things, um, share our work. It's also a great working space for the children to spread out in the classes. Fantastic. Yeah. Now I'm sure it's warm. You have the uh, wood fired heater there in the uh, against the wall. How um, does that fit into the program of actually student responsibilities here in the Everything in fits into the program, Bruce. Right. The, the wood-fired heater, you have to get your fire licence to um, be able to light that. And uh, one of our teachers is there here waiting ready in the morning in the colder months like now, and the children learn how to light fires. We've got four classrooms, four classrooms. so nice for 95 children at the moment. Right. And, um, we work very much as a community, so the classrooms do cross over and um, the children Terrific. all get to work with the other teachers too. Mm. Yeah. Very good, so let's go and have a look in the classroom. Okay, we're here in one of the classrooms. I just wanted Bruce to see um, how nature pedagogy works an example. And um, one of our teachers is very creative, uh, planted some sunflowers with the students when they came in for orientation day last year. Over the summer they grew, they're on the back wall there and when we arrived this year they're beautiful big yellow giant sunflowers and the children have taken all the seeds from there and um, used the seeds for mathematics so uh, we look at it's a really good inquiry into the mathematics in nature. I've heard you mention the importance of nature and the natural environment into the lives of um, you know, young um, people as they grow up. Um, what's your philosophy there? Well, that's one of my areas of interest and uh, it's well known through a lot of really good research that um, nature is an essential element for our own well-being. We need nature to help us feel calm and we live in such a technology driven world that um, you can forget about that great outdoors and the children get outdoors here get their hands dirty they love it we see a real sense of well-being in the children's manner when they arrive Bruce, you mentioned the billy carts out there. Mm. Well, we've got all these wonderful committees and we do have a billy cart committee like all the other six committees six that we committees, all set, yeah. six or yep. seven, and recycling committee, kitchen committee, children love it. And it gives them an opportunity to take on one a responsibility and show some integrity about uh, what they're doing. Mm. And they really own the committees. So it's a really important part of them growing up where everyone's expected to share in a community and community right. being a big part of Mount Rowan, the committees are ideal for that. Notice how clean the kitchen is. Mm, That's, I they've been here, the kitchen committee, right. but um, the kitchen is the hub at Mount Rowan for food and wow. celebrating food. We grow a lot of vegetables out in the garden and we also have do taste a little bit of the meat that comes off the um, mm. paddock, comes from the paddock. So the paddock to plate, uh, kitchen pulls it all together.
Well, Mark, we're here in the Rintel Centre, uh, which is one of the facilities that the whole school uses. How does the junior school use the Rintel Centre? Yeah, so again, we're so lucky to be part of this K-12 school with the facilities um, and the, the staff in the PE and sport area timetable it so that it's shared equally. Um, we come up here for some of our fundamental motor skills or basketball activities that we're doing in PE at the time, but also with our sporting activities and after school sport, we share these facilities, the Rintel, the other gyms and, and the John Vernon Field just out here with the whole schools. What is great about all this Isaac is that the learners are so involved in their learning and that it's real team effort between students, teachers and parents. No secret teacher business. Well, they have it folks. An interesting journey into teaching and learning in the junior school at Ballagrama. Until next time, stay, stay curious people. people.